Hello everybody. Uh, my name is Amit Susana and I'm standing outside what used to be my beautiful home until the horrific attack of October 7th occurred. I've been here for three times since that shocking day and each time it's getting harder to comprehend the horrendous crimes that took place here. This was such a beautiful neighborhood to live in with beautiful, kind, young people they just wanted to continue to live their life in peace. Each time I visit here and realize that I'm the only one from this neighborhood that has returned so far, it just breaks my heart and in some ways make me feel so guilty that I'm here and they're not. Neither one of us can even begin any sort of healing process before they all return back home safely. We must do everything it takes to make sure they return. On October 7, I woke up to the horrible sound of the thousands of missiles launched from Gaza. It all started at 6.20 a.m. Around quarter to seven, I started hearing gunshots that kept getting closer and closer. Very soon afterwards, I heard people shouting in Arabic outside my window. I hid in my safe room for about three hours until I heard someone knocking on the window of the safe room. I was so afraid that I finally decided to hide in the closet. The entire time I was texting with my friends and family until I realized my cell phone battery is about to run out. Two minutes after my phone went dead, I heard a huge explosion of a hand grenade that was tossed inside my living room. Immediately after that, someone opened the closet door and dragged me out. At that time, I saw that the entire house was filled with heavily armed men in civilian clothing. And I noticed that the house is starting to catch fire. As I was in my pajamas, I took the blanket from my bed to cover myself up. They took me on foot from the kibbutz to the Gaza Street border. The kidnapping was very violent. I kept resisting until they eventually tied me up by my arms and legs and dragged me on the floor. It took them over an hour to take me to the border. I was beaten up really badly. My entire face and body was bruised and swollen. I was then taken to a house where I was held alone, tied up by my ankle with a metal chain so I could not move at all. Needless to say that I didn't get any medical aid the entire time. I was alone for a couple of weeks with Hamas armed soldiers guarding me the entire time. There was little food. I was kept in the dark and had to ask permission to use the bathroom, even not allowed to close the bathroom door. After that, they moved me to different places with different Hamas guards in each place. All the guards were heavily armed and abused me and the other hostages. I was also held in a Hamas tunnel, 40 meters deep, where there was no oxygen and very little food. The tomb-like tunnel was dark, damp, and felt like if we were buried alive. We were held in such inhumane conditions. No person should ever be subjected to such brutal and ruthless treatment. Being in Hamas captivity means being afraid for your life every single minute. When you are in Hamas captivity, everything is just so fragile. You are constantly on the edge. Things can go drastically wrong every second. You are not allowed to speak, not allowed to cry, and not even allowed to comfort each other when times get really bad. I was under an emotional and physical terror the entire 55 days I was held in captivity, feeling like every moment can be my last. Every second felt like eternity as I knew that my life can be over at any given moment. I had no control over my mind, over my body and soul. It was absolutely terrifying. The only thing that kept me going there was the belief that the world is behind us, doing everything in its power to release us. I was released after 55 days that felt like eternity. Even though I was there and I know how it feels like, I can't even begin to imagine how it feels like to be held there for 115 days. 
I hope that the remaining hostages there are able to keep their faith <clears throat> alive and stay strong. But even the toughest souls can't hold on for such a long time. I'm here today to ask you to speak on their behalf and to do everything in your power, even more, to bring them all back home as soon as possible, as every day, every minute, and every second counts. And the time is really running out. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we will now um, step into Amit's house. Uh, again, in small groups. Let's end it, please. And afterwards, uh, we do have one more person who's going to speak.